welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game of the night, the Delaware State University men's basketball team will take on the Norfolk State Spartans here at Memorial Hall. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We just saw the ladies come up short in a comeback effort, falling 81 to 74 to Norfolk State. Now for the starting lineups for the Norfolk State Spartans. It's gonna be Alex Long, Jordan Butler, number 45. Number two, Zeno Robinson. Number three, Jonathan Wade. And number 11, Kerwin Okoro. Norfolk State comes into this game four and 13 overall. They're one and one in the MEAC. They played just two games falling to Morgan State back on January the 4th. And then this past Wednesday, they got an 80 to 76 win. Over Savannah State. And excuse me, they're one and two in conference. They lost to North Carolina Central 72 to 57 this past Saturday. So a short turnaround for them. And now we get ready to see the Delaware State University Hornets starters announced. A little bit of a different look this time for the Hornets. They got four usuals and the new guy entered into the starting lineup. Number three, Joe Lewis into the starting lineup for Jamola Onafade. Number 10, Kavan Waller, the sharpshooter in the starting lineup. DeAndre Haywood, who we'll get into in a little bit. Number one, starting. The sophomore, number 22, Devin Morgan. And number 24, the man coming off of a rough game, rough game, Artem Tabakaya. And Artem, you all know the story, just two days ago had two opportunities at the free throw line, just needed one to win the game. Missed them both, the Hornets go to overtime and end up falling. Uh, so our Tim certainly getting a vote of confidence from Coach Walker, leaving him in the starting lineup. Our Tim, a good player. Uh, he's a key to this Hornet team. He's an effort guy, he can shoot, he can defend. He can do a lot of things for the Hornets, uh, but certainly maybe a little shaky uh, at the gun for our Tim for the Hornets, but they're gonna need him to be at his best today if they're gonna beat Norfolk State. We'll get into the players. To watch in this game for North Norfolk State, it's going to be number three, Jonathan Wade. Jonathan Wade having a big time senior season. Wade, the redshirt senior out of Panama City, Florida. He was the defensive player of the week back the final week of December. He's third in the MIAC in scoring. He's reached double figures in all 17 games this season. And he had his first career double-double. He went for 18 and 12 against Mississippi State out of the SEC. As for the Hornets, the man, the senior, number one, DeAndre Haywood. DeAndre had his best game of the season last year against Norfolk State. He was the spark that led them to their upset win last year at 15 points. He leads the MEAC in steal. He was a third team all MEAC selection in the preseason. And he's at the 20 point mark three times this season. So here we go, the two and one Delaware State University Hornets against the one and two Norfolk State Spartans. And we're set to do battle. The tip ready to go, Alex Long versus Joe Lewis. And the Spartans take control. And you're gonna see Zaina Robinson run a lot of the point position for the Spartans. And there's DeAndre Haywood, very active in that zone. You see why he leads the MEAC in steals. He is active, he's athletic, and he wants the basketball and he's not afraid to go get it. Zaina Robinson, the 5'11 junior, running the point for Norfolk State. Butler inside, kicks it over to Robinson. Picks it out, Wade the three. Wade off the mark, Devin Morgan the long rebound and he's gonna try and push. All by himself, goes up for the layup, no good. Lewis the putback, he can't get it to go. And now here come the Spartans. Robinson no good, Lewis can't get the rebound and Wade gets the offensive glass and the putback. And Susanna Robinson pushing it there against the Hornets able to create a transition bucket and the Spartans strike first. 
Hornets going quickly. Lewis kicks it out. Waller open for three. Kavon Waller, no good. But Joe Lewis attacking the glass inside over number 11, Kerwin Okoro. And the Hornets, their first bucket of the game, but Norfolk State coming back quick. Jonathan Wade. Hornets a little slow to get into the press, and Wade and the Spartans beat it, and it should send Jonathan Wade to the line. Foul on Joe Lewis. But again, for the Hornets, coming off of a tough loss on Saturday, one in which they led by 10 with about five minutes to go. The Hampton Pirates went on a 16-0 run. Delaware State answered with back-to-back -back threes and then, as we said, had the oppor opportunity to win it and couldn't come through at the end of regulation. And you have to give credit to the Hampton Pirates. They were absolutely on fire in overtime, didn't miss a three-point, or excuse me, didn't miss a free throw and didn't miss anything inside the arc. And uh, they really took control of that overtime on the offensive end. And got out of here with a road win, but now the Hornets try and respond against another good MEAC team. And one that they beat in last year's lone matchup. We said it, DeAndre Haywood took over that basketball game. They were down as many as 15 as Haywood tries to go to the basket. And it's going to be a foul called on Zayna Robinson. But the Hornets were down as many as 16 in the first half, and they were down 12 at the break. But they shot almost 54% from the field in the second half to win that second half, 41 to 26, and get the win. Kavon Waller came off the bench, and he had 18 points, and he was 6 for 9 from the field. He was 2 of 4 from 3, and DeAndre Haywood, 15 points coming off the bench. He was 6 of 10 from the field. And Haywood misses both free throws there. Not a not what you want to see if you're the Hornets early on out of your best offensive player, DeAndre Haywood. A good entry pass inside to Kerwin Okoro, but he can't finish. And here come the Hornets. Art Tim kicks it out to Haywood. Morgan, the long three, pulls up just a little bit off the mark. Two Spartans fighting over it with each other to get the rebound. Okoro comes up with it, and Robinson will set up at the top of the key. About 17 and a half minutes to go, just underway here in the men's game. Game number two, the doubleheader here at Memorial Hall. Three ball, good from number 11, Kerwin Okoro. And so a 6-2 lead. Hornets a little slow getting, go on the off, getting going on the offensive end. They've got shooters on the floor. Our Tim, the kick out to Lewis. Lewis now going to take. He gets it swatted away by Jonathan Wade. And here come the Spartans the other way. And a foul called in transition on DeAndre Haywood. So not the start the Hornets were looking for on offense. Three minutes in, just one field goal. Hornets in that 3-2 zone, active. Okoro again, trying to get a little kiss off the side of the glass, but it won't drop. And Devin Morgan the other way. Morgan inside to R. Tim, and the shot blocked by Alex Long. And now the transition pass to Jordan Butler in the end one. Jordan Butler, the mean throwdown, and the foul on Joe Lewis. And so the rough start for the Hornets continue, and here comes Gasovich. Gasovich out of Serbia, the senior, in his final season in a Hornet uniform with we'll check in for Joe Lewis, who's got two fouls now. And Butler converts the three-point play. 
And the lead now 9-2, and Norfolk State going to set up a press. And actually looks more like a 1-3-1 full court zone. And now Gasovich. Gasovich just panics in the zone. Turns it over, and Alex Long goes the other way, and Gasovich fouls him. So Long will go to the free throw line. Norfolk State imposing their will, imposing their will early on against this Hornet basketball team. And the Hornets, after starting 2-1 and one on the road in the MEAC and then coming home and giving Hampton a run for their money, Hampton being the two-time conference champions, two-time defending conference champions, uh, they're not going to sneak up on anybody. Uh, Hampton might not have been fully prepared, fully ready for what they saw from the Hornets, but Norfolk State will not fall victim to the same thing. They have come out firing, intense, and they're in control of this one early. Lead already to double digits. And now DeAndre Haywood dribbles around the press. They break it quickly. They go to Gasovich. Gasovich down low, gets his shot blocked by Jordan Butler. Here come the Spartans the other way. And Robinson, the lay-in. It's 13 to two, more Folk State. Hornets again break the qu press quickly. And now they'll slow it down this time and looking eerily similar to last year's performance where Norfolk State came out and took control of the game early. And DeAndre Haywood brought him back. Down 11 early on, five seconds left on the shot clock. Morgan's got to go quickly now. Gets to the basket and the runner and the shot falls for Devin Morgan. So Devin Morgan finally an answer there for the Hornets to stop this Norfolk State run. And now they've got to get going on the defensive end. Norfolk State been picking them apart. Robinson pulls up from three. He can't get it to go. And Morgan, Jordan Butler goes up, gets the rebound and the putback. And Butler at just 6'6", though. He plays incredibly hard down low. He plays much bigger than that 6'6 frame of his, weighing in 240 pounds, the junior. Our Tim drives to the bucket, tries to go out to Waller. Waller comes in, gets it. He's got a floater, and it drops. So the Hornets may be starting to get things going in the half court on offense. Still got to find a way to defend this Norfolk State team. Norfolk State swinging it around the outside. There's Jonathan Wade. Three ball, no good. Wade creeping in. Butler comes up with the rebound. Robinson on the kick out, no good. Gasovich the rebound. And the Hornets up the floor over to Waller. Waller's guarded by Butler. Jonathan Wade's got DeAndre Haywood on him. That's going to be a matchup to watch today. Two of the best players on the floor and in the conference. Haywood gets Wade in the air, leans in. Tried to draw a foul, didn't get it. But he knocks down the jump shot anyway. And the Hornets now have scored on their last three possessions. 15-8, though. Spartans still out in front. Green up top, Okoro over to Robinson. Away, going to drive to the 10. Gasovich stops him, and we're going to get a travel. Good interior defense there from Gasovich. Dang straight up. Wade runs into him and lost that pivot foot. Pivot foot. And it's a travel, so the Hornets, after a shaky start, get going there towards the end in these last couple of minutes, close the lead to seven, and that will take us to our keys to the game. And key to the game number one, not really what you want to see. Start fast, and they come out and fall behind 13 to two early in the game, fighting back here. But you wanted to see them start fast simply because of the way the game ended against Hampton. Obviously, very discour discouraging loss, very tough loss to take. Uh, but you want to see them come out poised, composed, and, you know, and showing no ill effects from it. 
And uh, some struggles early on, but they're starting to get into the rhythm of things. Number two, attack the glass. Uh, the Hornets minus eight, averaging in the rebound margin, they're minus eight, so they get out rebounded by about eight and a half rebounds a game. Need to turn that around. That's not how you're gonna win basketball games. And key number three, this team really lives and dies by the three. Devin Morgan, uh, he made a bunch of threes last game. We know about Kavon Waller being one of the best, percentage-wise, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Haywood could knock him down. We saw Kobe Gantz, he had a couple of outshot shots last game. Joe Lewis, when he's on the floor, he can make them. So this Hornets team really likes to shoot the three, and they're really good at it. And so it's very important to what they do on the offensive end. And so, but no threes. One three pulled so far in this game, and it was a miss by Devin Morgan. And you see there President Harry Williams, president of Delaware State University, Mr. Or excuse me, Dr. Harry Williams. And uh, he's here, he's in attendance in every game. He's as big of a Hornet fan as anybody you'll find. And uh, he wants our athletics to, su to succeed just as, as much as he wants the educational department to succeed. And so he's here at every game. Hornets break the press. They'll find Waller, Waller mid-range. Easy look, knocks it down. And they're the first assist of the game for the Hornets. And now Norfolk State getting going very quickly and Jordan Butler continuing to attack the glass. Butler's third rebound already, third offensive rebound already in this game. So he's been excellent on the offensive glass. Morgan shot blocked from behind by Alex Long. Things moving very quickly in this basketball game between these two teams. And checking in the game for the first time for Norfolk State is Kyle Williams, number 24. But the Hornets had not had an assist in that first seven minutes of action, six and a half minutes of action until that last bucket. But a six second chance points for this Spartans team. Same, similar kind of story we saw in the women's game. The women struggled to keep Norfolk State off the glass and it ended up costing them. Here comes Kobe Gantz into the game for the first time today for DeAndre Haywood. And Gantz played one heck of a basketball game for a freshman in that hotly contested game against Hampton. He's calm and there, a good decision to kick it out to Waller. And Waller knocks down the three and the lead is cut to four. So this Hornets team, we talked a lot about their poise and composure against Hampton. And they're showing it here after coming out and struggling early. Not folding. And they're back to within four. Jordan Butler with the basketball. Dumps it inside to Long. Long's got Wade open. Wade passes it up. Our Tim closes out. Under five seconds to go on the shot clock. Robinson, the deep three, can't get it to go. And our Tim comes up with the long rebound. And he slows it down, fakes out Wade. The pass to Gasovich, and Gasovich crafty around the rim, up and under, and lays it in, and the lead down to two. And that's what the Serbians game is. He is an offensive big man. He can put his back to the basket. He wants the ball in the high post. And you get it to him on the run towards the basket. Wade pulls up for three, and he's going to be money from out there. Jonathan Wade, one of the best players in the MEAC. And he will consistently show you why if you leave him open from out there. So the lead back to five. Kobe Gantz, the back cut, and they're going to call a foul on Wade. Wade not letting Gantz go. And again, Gantz out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He has really been a find for Coach Walker as a freshman. He's been a very good, good player for him as a freshman. So he's got a chance to be a, a special player for the Hornets. And you see it on the video boards here at Delaware State, playing of Martin Luther King's uh, slideshow of his pictures. And a little bit of his I Have a Dream speech today being Martin Luther King Day and certainly an honor here in HBCU for Martin Luther King Day. Obviously, you know, one of the greatest people on the face of the earth, key to the civil rights movement. 
and so here at Memorial Hall honoring Martin Luther King. But you see there the block from Jordan Butler, and he has been huge early on in this game. Again, at just 6-6, but he's going to make his presence felt consistently uh, with his high energy. He made it felt last year, and he's making it felt again in this one early on. So back underway, eight and a half minutes into this game. Good job by our Tim to get rid of it there as the Spartans trapped him on the inbounds pass. Our Tim, the mid-range jumper, no good. So both teams going very well on the offensive end so far in this game. Spartans the strong start, lead by five. Under 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. Our Tim getting in passing lanes. Great defense there late in the shot clock by our Tim. And now they're going to force Norfolk State to go quick. Four seconds on the shot clock. Robinson off the inbounds, catch, and a shot no good, but Norfolk State, the offensive rebound, and they'll go back to work. Wade open from downtown, no good. But another offensive rebound by Alex Long. But swatted away, it's Kobe Gantz. Morgan gets the steal. And thought he had a trailer, Dana Razor. So the Hornets doing a good job initially on defense, but they're not closing out possessions, and they're giving Norfolk State a number of second-chance opportunities. And here's Alex Long from the free-throw line. It's shot is good, and a foul called. Foul called on Kobe Gantz. So now Alex Long a chance to convert all in the end one. Gasovich the rebound. Seven point game under 10 minutes to go. And a whistle and a foul down low on Dan Robinson, the seven foot center out of Norfolk, Virginia. Fresh 30 for the Hornets, nine and a half minutes to go. Into good inside pass to Gasovich, and he goes to work down low. Great pass from Kobe Gantz, and Gasovich goes to work and gets the easy lay-in with the left hand. And 
So the offense continuing to work well for the Hornets. Got to find a way to do a better job on the defensive glass now. Cross court pass. Under 10 minutes to go again. Robinson attacking, gets the floater to go. Hornets settling in well on the offensive end. And Gantz a wild pass trying to go to Gasovich, but it's a little bit too tall. And DeAndre Haywood will check in now for Devin Morgan. Jordan Butler checking back in the game, as does Micah Goss for Norfolk State. But Alex Long and Jordan Butler have really been the problem children for the Hornets. They have not been able to box the two out. Robinson from the outside, in and out. And Alex Long, another offensive rebound, but it's stolen away. And now Bodies hitting the floor. Loose ball. And we've got a jump ball, and it will go the Hornets' way. So again, though, the, the offensive rebounds, still a struggle for the Hornets. Now Kobe Gans trying to go to work. Not much movement from the Hornets on offense. He finds Gasovich, and Gasovich trying to go to work. A dangerous pass out to Razor spots up, and he's got it, Dana Razor. Dana Razor, that's what he's known for. Sharp shooter from the outside. And he spots up with less than 10 to go on the shot clock. And the Hornets hanging around in this game now, down four. Norfolk State continuing to play slow. Three ball pulls up, no good. Razor gets this rebound. Micah Goss off the mark for the Spartans. And now they clear it out. They go to Gasovich. They like this matchup, him and Alex Long. And Gasovich can't get it to go. Hornets got to get back now. Transition and a blocking foul called on Dana Razor. And that will take us to the media timeout. And the Spartans, you can see it. They can get it done in the half court and in transition, but they're very effective in transition. Haven't been as good in the half court, but the Delaware State University Hornets have failed to box out. And so Norfolk State up by four, and they're gonna go, Jordan Butler will go to the free throw line after the media timeout. But Hornets looking a little similar to the women uh, they've been good on the offensive end, but had their struggles boxing out on the defensive end. And it's got them down 24 to 20. Seven oh five left to go here in the first half. That's the first half highlight so far. See Kavon Waller getting the long rebound and able to get the teardrop floater to go. DeAndre Haywood coming off the bench. He just had a long rest in there. Tried to draw the foul. Wade did a good job of avoiding it. And Haywood knocked it down. And there's Kavon Waller, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. And you see Russian to Serbian right there, Artem Nagasovic in the lay-in in transition. And a good pass there from Colby Gantz. Great entry pass to get Gasovich the ball in, in a comfortable spot. And there's Razor spot up three. And so we get ready to go back to action here with just over seven minutes to go in the first half. Shooting 
Jordan Butler at the free throw line. He misses the first. Good on the second. So 25 to 20 will score. Seven minutes, five seconds to go in the first half. And good defense there from Norfolk State in transition. Norfolk State leading the rebound in category 14 to 11. They've got seven of them on the offensive end. Uh, but the Hornets shooting 50% from the field and 50% from beyond the arc. So certainly some encouraging signs for this team on offense, uh, but just struggling to win on in the rebounding category. And it's got them behind. In, good entry pass to Waller and a blocking foul called on Micah Goss. And Waller certainly feels like he could have made that. And you saw a look there from Dana Razor. Might feel like they got away with one. Ref called a block, but it might have been an offensive foul. And Waller short on his first free throw attempt. So Waller gets the second. And Norfolk State, they try and get a couple of sneak attacks on you. 25-21 to score. Good entry pass there to Long. Long kicks it out to Robinson. Robinson now going to drive. He kicks it out. Okoro shot no good, and Razor corrals the rebound. And the Hornets going to work now on offense. Razor fakes the three, a good behind the head pass to Haywood, but he couldn't handle it. 10 seconds now on the shot clock. Kobe Gantz going to try and take advantage of the mismatch. But Okoro's length able to reach over and get the block. And now six seconds left on the shot clock. Okoro at 6'4", the senior. Gantz certainly much shorter. Gantz at just, or excuse me, he's 6'4", as well. So somebody's not listed right on that, and I, don't, I think it's Kobe Gantz. I don't see him at 6'4". Hornets get the inbounds pass in, and now they have to go quick. Morgan's got Wade on him. Step back three, gets it to go. Devin Morgan, the contested three, knocks it down with a step back in your face. And the lead now down to one. Hornets have not let yet led yet in this basketball game. It was tied at two to two once in the game. Here's Okoro wide open for three, and he answers with a three of his own. Zayna Robinson. Drive and kick. And the lead now back to four. Hornets looking to respond. Three ball up from Haywood, no good. Spartans get the rebound and now they're gonna look to push. And Robinson thinks better of it, slows it down. And Spartans go to the mismatch. Haywood on Butler. Hornets quick to find it. They double team. And now another three from Okoro short. And Butler, another offensive rebound and a charge going to be called. DeAndre Haywood, a great job down low taking that charge. Butler got the rebound. And I told you, 6'6", six, six, just 6'6", six, six, but 240 pounds. He's a strong kid, and he likes to take advantage of it. But there it goes right into the chest of DeAndre Haywood, and Haywood takes the charge. 
Four and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Four point game. Razor up top to Haywood. Gasovich has it inside now. Waller wide open. Too strong with the three ball. Inside again to Butler. Robinson's got it up top now, under four minutes to go. Next break will take us to the media timeout. And the Hornets zone really swarming. There's a double dribble. Double dribble, travel, whatever you want to call them. That will take us to the media timeout. Three minutes and 54 seconds to go. In the first half, Norfolk State up by four. We get some more highlights from that first, from our first half of action. Devin Morgan there, the step back three. Just a great job creating that little bit of space. And he's a very good shooter, so that's all he needs. And a great job, great step back three. And my one question for Coach Walker right now would be, with the way Norfolk State is attacking the glass, I would like to see Damola Onafade get some minutes. Uh, not sure if he has an injury from the game on Saturday or what the case may be. Uh, but definitely would be a question of mine because Onofade at 6'9", can attack the glass, can get on the boards. And the Hornets have really been hurt on the glass so far in this game. But hanging around, down four, they're going to get the ball coming out of the media timeout. And have pulled their way back into it. They were down 13 at one point in this game. Or excuse me, it was 11 was the largest lead, but the Hornets back within four. Nonsense. I love the kids. Look, we got a little princess dancing. Go ahead, hit the choir, little mama. Get the camera over here. We got her. This way. And the Hornets back to work on offense, and they go back to Gasovich. If Gasovich gets inside, draws a foul. And Norfolk State been really off the mark from beyond the arc in this one. They're 3 of 15, shooting just 20% from the three-point line. And the Hornets fortunate for that. Gasovich gets the first free throw to go. Or, and it's only being out-rebounded by four, but the problem is they have nine defensive rebounds and Norfolk State with eight offensive rebounds. Uh, that's just, just not a stat that, that's associated with winning basketball games. Skasevich makes the second. Two-point game here. We're going to go all the way to the, all the way to halftime. No more media timeouts remaining. Wade the drive inside, he goes at Waller and Waller's called for the block. And Wade gets the end one. And so that the seventh foul against 
the Hornets, so the Spartans will be in the bonus now. And Jonathan Wade off the mark from the free throw line. Spartans fall to five of nine from the free throw line. Much different than what we saw from this Pirates from Hampton. They missed just two free throws all game against Delaware State on Saturday. And the Spartans trapping a little bit. Waller gets a look no good, and Haywood can't corral it. Waller a little bit rushed on the three, unable to get it to go, and Haywood couldn't corral the offensive rebound. And so both offenses have kind of slowed a little bit here towards the end of this first half. And we get a walk, travel called on number 22, Alex Long. And so Norfolk State starting to turn the ball over a little bit at their sixth turnover of the half. Gasovich pulls up for mid-range over everything. And a And that's not Gasovich's game. He is not a mid-range shooter. He wants the ball close into the basket. And Gantz couldn't go corral the rebound. I thought there could have been a foul called on Alex Long, but refs didn't think so. And Long on the other end converts. So the Hornets now two minutes left down six, looking to finish the half strong. Morgan open for three, he pulls up, he gets it to go. And just like that, the lead is cut in half. It's down to three. Hornets hanging around. They were down 11 points, just three minutes and 51 seconds into this game. But since then, they've battled back. Jonathan Wade, stop and pop, knocks it down. So the mid-range game for Jonathan Wade working. Five-point game, Waller sets the screen up top. Morgan's got the matchup he wants on. Alex Long drives, floater no good. And now Jonathan Wade, good transition offense and a layup missed. A bunny layup missed there by Kyle Williams. Here come the Hornets the other way. And Zayna Robinson didn't like the call and showing some emotion and nearly got a technical. You could see the ref eyeing him up after that foul call, after his reaction to the foul call. He thought he picked his pocket clean. Ref didn't think so. And now the Hornets in the bonus as well. So a one and one opportunity for Delaware State. And Kerwin Okoro checks in now for Robinson. And Morgan's free throw rims in and out. And with Zena Robinson off the floor now, Norfolk State calls a timeout. We'll see if they bring him back on the floor here. 45 seconds to go in the first half. Spartan leads, Spartans lead by five. Uh, with the Hornets now one of five from the free throw line. So both teams not converting from the charity strike. After being down 11 early, they fought back. And the lead now down to five, hanging in here. It's been steady at about this four or five point mark throughout most of this first half. And 
it. So the Hornets gonna try and cut into it here in that last 45 seconds before halftime. Spartans won the tip, so the Hornets will start with possession in the second half. And the Spartans look content to wake the shot clock all the way down. They can't hold for the last possession. The Hornets will get that. But Spartans trying to give them as little time as possible. And we get a three second violation on Jordan Butler. And so Coach Robert Jones calls the timeout for Norfolk State and they can't come through as they get a silly three second violation call. And now Delaware State shot clock turned off so they have the opportunity to hold for the last shot. Haywood's got it, now he's got Kyle Williams on him. He'll hand it off to R. Tim. Haywood goes in the 22. Alex Long and he can't convert the basket, but he's fouled, he'll go to the line for two with just four seconds left on the clock. And you know Haywood wishes he had that one back. That was a convertible opportunity. But he converts both from the free throw line and now four seconds left. Spartans up the floor quickly. Kyle Williams pulls up the long three, can't get it to go. And so we will go to the half. Norfolk State up by three. They led, as, led by as much as 11. Uh, but the Hornets have since chipped away and chipped away. It's 34 to 31. Hornets battling back for most of that first half. And so we'll go to the halftime break. First, we've got some highlights for you. Devin Morgan driving to the basket, gets the teardrop. Our Tim kicks it out to Waller. Here's Waller's. Floater, the Hornets, been pretty effective on offense. They kind of stalled out there in the last five, six minutes of the half, but so did Norfolk State. And so that has allowed the Hornets to hang around. Down three, and the Hornets playing nothing but close games in the, in Miak play. Had a game winner against North Carolina A&T by DeAndre Haywood to open up conference play. One by one point down at North Carolina Central. And then of course lost in overtime here on Saturday. And it looks like we're in for another close game here tonight on Martin Luther King Day. 34-31 the score. Norfolk State, your leader. And you see Devin Morgan there, maybe the play of the first half, that excellent step back three. And so we'll go to the half. Norfolk State, your leader, 
in your pain, in your beauty has been drugging you. Stories telling with the purity of your seed was violated by your masters for reasons then that were misunderstood. But I'm thankful that all things work together for the good. But look at you now. When we choose to let the pain go, we realize that even though your skin tones are different, they all still possess the same glow. And when you line up together, you can create your own rainbow. That is why I'm thankful for the chocolate cover, the almond roasted, the caramel complected, and the honey coated. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of the way you are made. If your beauty is the canvas placed on the masterpiece of the master famous canvas, tell me, what is it that makeup actually enhances? Listen to the melody of Mahadi. Stare into the mirror and dare to see what your father sees. I just pray that it is not a mask that covers your insecurities because I assure you, your beautiful brown will shade with no impurities. Be proud of who you are. Do not let your skin tone or your bust size or your backside that cause you to fall under the shadow of society's labels. Do not let the world break your sisterhood apart and they cause you to begin to look at each other as if your names are Sarah Bartman. And if you do not know who she is, look her up. She was a beautiful black woman, divinely handcrafted, yet her life was displayed as a confounded sight. Take a moment to listen to what her ground sounded like. And take a moment to listen to your own. Be proud of what it sounds like. Black queens and brown knights. It's shining on. You are kings, warriors, hunters, and farmers. Builders of our homes, our families' foundation. Be mindful of our history. And let us be proud of our nation. Show some love once again for Dennis Spence. Clap your do that, you know when you do that poetry where you just snap your fingers. Get with me, y'all. Alright. Once again, we have the one in 500 brought to you by Delaware Army. We have our two contestants. We got Alden, who's in kindergarten. And we got Jada, who's in third grade. Y'all know what y'all gotta do? You gotta race the cars down, go around them, and race it back here. The winner will go to the second round. Are you ready? Ready, set, go! I can take it like a pro, you know. Do a long throw. That way, that way, that way, all of them. I'll be popping this like a disco. All you gotta say is this and go. When you say it, no, I'm not going to go. Turn it around for it. Turn it around for it. There you go. Who's come back, Jada? Who's gonna come back, Jada? No, Jada. No, Jada. Go around him, Jada. She says I'm a bad driver. You got your license? She says she's only eight years old. Come on, you got it. Just turn it around. It'll be hard to watch a cat when you got the job. You got to be a four to one, so we can turn it around. Turn it off, Tom. Somebody help me out down there. Turn the car around. Be a freak, but the man is here. I'm still Okay. Oh, you got it. Reverse all the way back then. Reverse all the way back. Reverse all the way back. No, there you go. Reverse. Keep going. It'd be hard to understand when come a jaw key lock. Come on, keep going. You almost got it, Alden. Come on. Bring it towards you. Bring it right here. Finish it up. Good job, Jada. Don't forget, we do have a little prize for you. Make sure you head on over there. Oh, good job. Make it to the second round. Hang what you saying when I walk through. Next up, we got Joseph. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, our next two contestants to make it to the second round. We got Teray and Joseph. You ready, Joe? Teray, you ready? Alumni right there. Oh, you mark. You set. Go. I don't want to pull a Gucci on my feet. Who got more money, you and me? Me. I'm a walk through. Okay. Okay, Teray. I'm the believer that I got to tell me. I'm a strong 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to men's action here at Memorial Halls. The Delaware State University Hornets trail the Norfolk State Spartans by a score of 34 to 31. Some first half stats for you. Norfolk State leading the rebounding totals 21 to 15, and eight of the 21 have come on the offensive end. Both teams are five of nine from the free throw line, so they're both struggling from uh, the charity stripe. Norfolk State just three of 16 from beyond the arc, so they've had their looks and they've not been afraid to take them. But they've struggled to get them go and if get them to go, and if if they do get hot from beyond the arc, the Hornets are going to be in trouble. Leading point getter for Norfolk State, Jonathan Wade with 10. As for the Hornets, it's Devin Morgan. He's got eight points. And that pushes Jonathan Wade into double digits for the 18th time this season in 18 games. So he's certainly making a case to be in the player of the year conversation in the MEAC. Norfolk State will start with the ball, 34-31. Alex Long going right at Joe Lewis, and Lewis gets another foul called against him. And it looked like he might have caught an elbow to the head or something like that. And the refs are going to go look at it, see if there will be a double foul call if you Flying elbows are dangerous in this sport. Um, so if, if that is, if that happens to be what Joe Lewis was caught with on the top of the head, uh, then they very possibly could call double foul. We've got a, 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 an extra look at it, a second look at it here for you. And uh, Robinson kicks it over to Long, and Long's got Joe Lewis on him. He drives. There's the body contact, and then there's that left elbow coming down right into Joe Lewis's face. Uh, so not sure exactly. Can't, can't say that there was intent there for Long to do that. Uh, but still see what the refs called. And the refs get done at the monitor. They come over to talk with each other. And now they'll go back and take another look at it. So still not particularly happy with the look that they had. And Coach Robert Jones getting a little unhappy. Uh, he thinks that there should not be a foul at all. And so obviously the longer the refs take, the more they think about it, the more they think there's a possibility of a foul being called. And they get done at the video screen and they'll talk again. So we'll see what happens. For the Hornets, Joe Lewis. Not sure if he'll remain on the floor. Again, that was his third foul. So we'll see if Coach Walker makes the adjustment or leaves Joe Lewis in. And so they're going to bring both coaches in. That leads me to believe that, that you are going to get a double foul, but. Not sure they could just, they could have a ruling and now they're explaining it. And to get the extra look at it here as we get the call from the refs. So the ref said that they were checking for a flagrant after the foul called on Joe Lewis. So they decided there was no flagrant foul called. And so Joe Lewis commits his third personal and Long will go to the line for two. Makes the first to extend the Spartan lead to four.
Again, just underway here in the second half. And a long second free throw is off the mark. Haywood's got it at the top of the key. And we've got an out of bounds. Ball will head back to Norfolk State. And so Robinson will bring it up again. Jonathan Wade, 18th time this season. He's been in double digits. He gets this one stripped. Great play from DeAndre Haywood. Okoro chases him down and is going to force him to go to the free throw line. So good effort play there from Kerwin Okoro. Chase him down. Try to get the block. Uh, but I think Haywood sensed him. Went up strong and drew the foul call on Okoro. And Haywood can't get the first to go, so both teams continuing to struggle at the line. Gets the second to go, so both teams now at 6 for 11 from the charity stripe. And that could end up being the difference in this game if one of these teams can get it going and start knocking down the free ones. Uh, they're going to put themselves in a good position to win this game because the two teams have been pretty evenly matched since that early run that Norfolk State opened up with. Here's Robinson, pulls up from three, and he gets it to go. Robinson. 38, 32 to score now. And Norfolk State had those looks in the first half. And as we said, 3 of 16 from beyond the arc in the first half, they really struggled. Haywood can't get it to go. Joe Lewis going to work on the offensive glass. He gets it. And a foul called on Jordan Butler. Not a shooting foul, however. So the Hornets will inbound from under the basket. They'll get a fresh 30. And Lewis inbounds to our Tim. Artem finds the cutting Lewis. He kicks it out to Morgan. Morgan drives, loses control, and Jordan, or excuse me, Okoro gets the pass. Out the other end, Artem with a big time block. Artem in transition, a big time block, and Haywood goes up. Can't finish around the rim. And we're going to get a replay of that last block, R. Tim in transition, a big time chase down block. And I told you about him earlier in the game. He's a high effort, high energy player. Haywood's first, first free throw is good, but R. Tim, that's why he stays in the starting lineup. Uh, he's a high energy player. He's gonna give you the effort in there, a big time chase down block. Didn't pin it against the backboard like LeBron does, but hey, we'll take it. Haywood converts two, and the lead back down to four, but the Hornets have struggled to get much closer than this. They got it to three one time, but, since, but other than that, Norfolk State has not let them get all the way back, and the Hornets looking to break through, try and break that wall down, and the alley-oop pass from Robinson. Joe Lewis fell asleep down low, and Alex Long converts on the alley-oop lay-in. And so the lead back to six, and that's why I say the Hornets have just struggled to break that wall down. They've gotten the three once. And other than that, this lead has pretty much been right around this three, four, five, six mark for Norfolk State. And a charge called on DeAndre Haywood. Six-point game, Norfolk State with the ball now. Oh, 
Here comes Okoro, he'll pull up from the outside. Can't get it to go in a long rebound out to Morgan. The Norfolk State a good job getting back. Morgan though pulls up open for three and an air ball. And Jordan Butler, his length might have bothered Devin Morgan's shot there and Morgan, a rarity you see from him, the air ball. And Kobe Gantz gonna check back in now for DeAndre Haywood. And so the Hornets again, just trying to break down that wall. Haven't been able to get much closer than this. Norfolk State continuing to keep them at arm's length. Wade fakes now, he's gonna pull up from mid range, but they'll call a travel. So Jonathan Wade, he's at 10 points, but the Hornets, I think they would consider that a win. Uh, he's averaging 18 a game. So he's been relatively quiet to this point. He hasn't been great. But he's got Norfolk State out in front. And now he'll guard Kobe Gantz. Gantz gets it over to Artem. And we get a foul called on Zayna Robinson. Excuse me, it's Zanai Robinson. Quick inbounds pass to R. Tim, and he gets the R. He gets the mid-range jumper to fall, and the lead back down to four. Zanai drives, kicks it to Williams. Williams three is good. Great job by Zanai. Robinson to break down the zone and find Kyle Williams open. And once again, every time the Hornets get to four, the Spartans have an answer. Let's go, now up top, Morgan's got Butler on him. And Morgan loses the ball. Butler tries to jump him and Morgan pulls up way short. Okoro in transition gets the lay in and Norfolk State now on a bit of a run here, lead quickly up to nine. Not a great offensive possession there. I think Morgan wanted the isolation, isolation against Jordan Butler, uh, but he didn't get it. Now here's our Tim, he'll drive. He loses it off of his knee. And there's the first media timeout. So the Hornets again struggling to break down that wall and get within four. And Norfolk State has expanded their lead to nine points. And now the Hornets going to try and come back again. Uh, but again, give Norfolk State credit. They've had an answer every time this game has uh, begun to come in question. They've answered right back and ballooned the lead back up, and here it's up to nine. And so the Hornets going to be forced to answer out of this media timeout. Rock out here at DSU. If you're starting on your ex on Instagram, <laughs> shout out to y'all. I hear you, Gifted. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Spitting hands. Uh, I just 
Back out of the timeout here, Kyle Williams, another three, gets it to go, and the lead is 12. Biggest lead of the game for the Spartans and the Hornets. Got it all the way down to four, and now just like that, it's back to 12, and they're going to be forced to come back again. Morgan off the screen. Uh, outside of that step back three, though, earlier in this game, he has not really had his best, and Kobe Gans loses control. Zanai Robinson in transition, pull up, jumper, no good. And Waller's got it, and Devin Morgan going to slow it down. And it looks like DeAndre Haywood's going to check back in at the next break. As soon as he came off the floor, this game's gotten away from his guys. Kobe Gantz creates a big-time play. Kobe Gantz finds the basketball, crosses over on the long rebound, and finds Morgan open in the corner for three. And now Norfolk State trying to go to work. Good find and Jordan Butler the up and under. And the lead up to 11, 50 to 39. Spartans out in front. Hornets get the mismatch. Waller fakes out a long, finds Lewis open for three, and Lewis has got it. And Joe Lewis can knock him down from the outside. He does there in the lead. Now back down to eight. So 50 to 42. Hornets fighting. Kyle Williams, another three. Way long. And here comes Devin Morgan the other way. Hornets going to try and cut it back to six. They will not go away. Our Tim now with it up top. And Alex Long at 22, number 22. He's a tough, tough guy to score on with his length. And Zanai Robinson to steal. Kyle Williams in transition to lay in. Zanai Robinson, some fast, fancy work there. Fakes right, goes left. And an easy lay in in the lead back up to 10. So the Hornets again. Norfolk State just continues to answer. They will not back down from any run the Hornets make. Under 10, Morgan's got the mismatch, drives, pulls up short, gets his own rebound, and gets it back out to Kevon Waller, and he'll reset. Under 12 minutes to go. Next timeout will take us to the media timeout. And our Tim fouled on the drive. And that will take us to the under 12 media timeout. Spartans up 52 to 42. Our Tim will go to the free throw line when we get back underway. Uh, but the Spartans, again, just continue to keep the Hornets at arm's length. There's Morgan's three. But the Spartans continue to respond. The inside layup to Jordan Butler. And then Morgan inside to Waller. And Lewis is three. So the Hornets continue to fight. But they're going to need to go on a run here soon. Here's the nice fancy passing there. Just faking it every which way, and then finds Williams for the easy lay-in. But Kyle Williams has been a revelation for Norfolk State, knocking them down from the outside. And he's gotten them going from the three-point line, and that has what has allowed the Spartans to open this lead back up to 10. Uh, 52 to 42, still over 10 minutes to go in the second half, and the Hornets will be at the free throw line. And Art Tim 
This will be the first time he's at the free throw line since that debacle at the end of the Hampton game, or at the end of regulation against Hampton. So we will see if he's got any lingering effects from the end of that game. But the Hornets, they're going to need to go on a run because Norfolk State, like I said, has really kept them at bay at arm's length, and the Hornets have just not been able to break down the door. And so they're going to need to go on a run and going to need to go on it soon. You don't want to, you know, be behind getting too late into the game. Causes some teams to panic. And uh, this is a poised Hornet team, though, much different uh, than one we've seen last year. Our Tim Good at the free throw line on the first one. And Artem makes them both, and DeAndre Haywood now will check in for him. And you saw Artem, a little bit of a fist pump there after making the second one. So certainly a bit of relief there for the Russian to be able to make both of them, get his confidence back at the line. And now the Hornets trap, and a travel called on Jonathan Wade. The trap works for the Hornets. Haywood and Morgan trap Wade up top, and Wade turns it over, and both teams now at 10 turnovers. 10 turnovers apiece, 11 and a half to go. The lead is eight for the Spartans. And the Hornets have DeAndre Haywood on the floor, and I would be surprised if he comes off again. He pulls up from downtown, and the shot goes in and out. And now the Spartans have numbers, and I Robinson down the other way. Jonathan Wade's got it inside the feed. No good, scramble down low, and Joe Lewis has it. It was number 13, Stavian Allen. Couldn't get the lay-in to go off the pass from Wade. And so the Hornets, good transition defense, will keep their lead, or keep the deficit, excuse me, at eight. Haywood down low, can't get it to go. Been close on a couple of shots, but neither of Folds. And I Robinson, the alley-oop, and they can't convert again. Stavey and Allen misses another one. Now in transition, Morgan's three, in and out again. And Robinson pushing again. And he's short. Here comes Morgan the other way, Morgan and Haywood. Morgan tries to drop it off to Haywood. Haywood gets it. Now Allen's got it, and Robinson finally going to slow it down. Fast and heavy action here midway through the second half, and neither team able to get a bucket out of it. What a sequence that was. Both teams, good opportunities, and couldn't get either of them to go. Wade, the drive, goes at Lewis. Lewis goes straight up. Good defense there. And another miss, and Haywood looking to push. And he thinks better of it. He'll bring it out. Haywood wide open, just thinks better of it. And this one poked away, and Haywood looking a little bit tired there. And Coach Walker going to get a timeout. He senses his team a little bit of tired legs after that last sequence. And boy, that was a crazy one. But the lead at eight, Norfolk State still out in front, but the Hornets doing everything they can to call their way back into this one. They'll have the ball when we get back ready for action.
Nine and a half minutes to go here in the second half. Devin Morgan will inbound. It's Gantz, Waller, Haywood, Lewis, and Morgan on the floor for the Hornets. Waller up top to Lewis. Not a lot of time on the shot clock. Morgan forced, forced to pull up from way downtown on a shot clock violation. Joe Lewis was unaware of how much time was left on the clock, and Morgan had to come get the ball. And the Hornets starting to run out of time here. Nine minutes, can't continue to waste possessions. Wade, a good pass inside to Butler, and a foul going to be called on Kobe Gantz. Gantz, the much smaller player than Jordan Butler is, had no choice there but to make him earn it at the stripe. Butler gets the first to go. And so Butler sinks both. The lead back to double digits. 54 to 44, Norfolk State out in front. Gantz from downtown. He can't get it to go, but he's fouled. Micah Goss fouls the three-point shooter, and Gantz will go to the line for all three of them. And the cardinal sin in the game of basketball, fouling a three-point shooter. And Gantz's shot was in and out as well, so he's very nearly had a chance at a four-point play. And the officials reviewing something at the scorer's table, not sure exactly what. But once again, the story of this game has been Norfolk State jumping out to that 11-point lead early on. And since then, they have been in control of this game. And Gantz's shot was not a three-pointer, it was a two. From my angle, it looked like he was behind the line, but I certainly don't have the best angle of that shot. And so Gantz makes the first. But the Hornets just been struggling to fight back from that deficit. And Gantz misses the second one. And so unable to convert there. The lead is nine for the Spartans with the ball. Dana Razor set to check in for the Hornets. Coro puts it on the floor. He's going to attack the basket and draws a foul on DeAndre Haywood. And that's Haywood's third, and with a little over eight minutes to go in this game, that's something to keep your eye on. Haywood fouled out in overtime against Hampton. And Dana Razor going to check in for Kobe Gantz. So Coach Walker going to leave DeAndre Haywood on the floor, trust his senior to uh, be smart for the rest of these eight and a half minutes. And Okoro gets them both to go. So Norfolk State beginning to settle in and make their free throws. And the Hornets got to get going here soon. Down 11, just over eight minutes to go in the ball game. Defense, 
And Joe Lewis steps out of bounds, and the ball will head back to Norfolk State. The Hornets just cannot get anything going to get a run and get back into this game. Norfolk State has really pushed this lead up to double digits, and it's been right around there now for a while. Wade pulls up from downtown, gets it to go. And the biggest lead of the game now for the Spartans, it's 14. And the Hornets really struggling here in this second half. Just 14 points. Haywood takes to the basket, tries to scoop on the up and under. It can't get it to go, and Norfolk State beginning to put their foot on the gas. Wade open in the corner, passes it up. Got Dana Razor on him. Razor follows, follows him all the way out to the top of the key. Now under 10 to go. Wade finds a Coro open for three. Shot too long. And Haywood finds Razor. Razor open for three. Shot too long. And it's going to be out of bounds on Norfolk State. And now the under eight media timeout, but things continue to just stretch out a little bit by bit for Norfolk State. They're now up 14, and the Hornets really in need of an answer out of this timeout. 6.52 in the game, they're down 14. They really need to go to work here in this final seven minutes if they're gonna get the win. Coach Walker, we'll see if they turn up the intensity and, uh, and try and turn the pace up in this basketball game, but they're not great on offense uh, in a full court, you know, in a press fast paced game. That's not their strong suit. So they're gonna have to get going and get going soon if they're gonna win this basketball game. Norfolk State playing with us and I can't get my own students. Look at this, I'm about to go party with them. Look at this. And so back underway here, 652. Hornets will inbound and they need to go to work and go to work soon, down 14. And they bring in Gasovich for Joe Lewis. And credit Norfolk State. They have really stepped up on the defensive end here in this second half. Morgan pulls up from downtown, gets it to go. And not great offense there from the Hornets, but bailed out by a great shot. And so as much credit as you give Norfolk State, and a Foul called on Kavon Waller. And I don't know about that call at all. Waller looked like he had all ball. Hornets have done a better job on the glass in this third, in this second half. Butler gets the first one to go. Butler, a very good free throw shooter. Much better than your average big man. Uh, but the Hornets have not allowed an offensive rebound for the Spartans here in this second half. But the Spartans have 
assisted on 14 made baskets to just seven for the Hornets. So they really working the ball movement, lead up to 13. Hornets have to really lock in on the defensive end just as much as they do the offensive end to make this comeback. Spartans really getting it going on both ends. Razor's got it up top, 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. Inside to Gasovich. Gasovich kicks it out to Razor. Razor drives, draws a foul. But they're gonna call it a foul on the floor, no shooting foul. And that's the seventh on the Spartans, so Razor will go to the line for a one and one. And so there's the good news for the Hornets. They're in the bonus. Now it's can they make them? Because they're gonna have their opportunities again. They end the bonus. One and one for Dana Razor. Razor, one of the shooters on this team, though. You've got to expect him to make these. And he knocks down the first. Hornets at five fouls, so they've only got one more foul to give before they put Norfolk State in the bonus. And now they come out in the press. They get it into Zanai Robinson, and Robinson dribbled down the left side. He'll break the press. Great effort there by Robinson. Eleven point game. Robinson's got it up top, swings it over to Wade. Wade, good find inside and a travel. No doubt about that call. Travel called on Alex Long. It's a good defense there, and you see Jordan Butler come over and tell Long to calm down a little bit. No need to rush in, rush in this situation if you're the Hornets. And Coach Jones going to call a timeout for Norfolk State. And uh, he knows, I think this is because of the press. He knows Delaware State's really going to try and stay in that press and speed the game up, and he doesn't want that to happen. The, the clock is the friend of the Norfolk State Spartans. Five minutes, 30 seconds to go in the game, and their lead is 11. So the clock is the friend of Norfolk State. There's no need to go quickly. And Coach Jones, I think, expressing that to his team, making sure they don't go quick, don't get out of rhythm, because what they've done in this second half has been very, very good, and they're out in front because of it. As for the Hornets, I think if you're Coach Walker, you've got to tell you guys, we've got to be urgent. Be aggressive, but be, be aggressive with good shots. Don't waste opportunities. Don't take bad shots. Go quick, get your look, and make it. And I think that's the simplest thing you can say to your team on the defensive end. Try and create turnovers. Be aggressive in the passing lanes. Uh, but you're there. You're in this game only down 11, and they've shown the ability to get this lead to less than five. It's a matter of can they continue that. Gantz going right at Alex Long. And the Hornets just missed opportunities. They've been so close on several fouls, nearly getting them to go. And Gantz, another one there. He can't get it to go, but he'll go to the line for two more. Gantz, one for two at the line. Gantz hits the first, and you see he goes inside, gets long in the air, and desperately wanted that to go, but couldn't get it. Uh, but he does convert on the first. See if he can cut it to single digits now with the second. And Short lost a little bit of his legs on that one. And the lead will stay at 10, but the Hornets going to stay in that press. Norfolk State breaks it, and here comes Jonathan Wade the other way. And a charge taken there by Kavon Waller. And that's not what Coach Jones wanted. Wants his team to remain calm, not try and force the issue. There they did, and they get a foul called because of it. Gantz gets it to Morgan. Morgan to Razor. Razor for three. He's got it. And the Hornets cut the lead to seven now, and we've got a whistle as the ball gets loose off the main shot. And Gasovich going to check back in. Defense for offense. He'll check in for Kobe Gantz. They'll try and use him to protect the rim. And the Hornets staying in that press. Robertson's got it. Clock at 25. Spartans get it across. 
Robinson over to Wade. Wade inside, gets the tough lay in to go. And there's the one problem with the press. If they can break it, they will have numbers and they can get themselves a good look. Wade had one there. It's the lead back to nine for the Spartans. Four and a half minutes to go. One more media timeout remaining. Razor fakes the pull up, trying to go inside to Gasovich. Tim going to check in now for Dana Razor. I think likely another defense for offensive substitution. And they try the baseball pass, and DeAndre Haywood picks it off. Haywood now goes back the other way and gets the land. And Coach Jones not happy at all with his team. Trying too hard to hit the home run. And now back the other way. Wade's got it, goes at the rim, and gets the easy land. And the problem remains for the Hornets in that press. Jonathan Wade is a threat to score at any time. Baller swings it to Morgan. Morgan a long three, loves that spot. A little too long, but Artem gets the offensive rebound for the Hornets. Haywood drives, kicks it to Waller. Waller for three, short. And we're gonna get a foul called on Devin Morgan, trying to get the rebound. So the final media timeout here. The Hornets continue to fight, try and cut into this lead, but Norfolk State just will not allow it. Nine-point lead for the Spartans, 3.32 remaining in the ballgame. So the Hornets have left themselves in some trouble. I think they're trying too hard to look for the three. And you see them settling for some threes. You know, Wallers you're okay with. That wasn't a long three, and that's a good shot for him. But you see here Jonathan Wade out of the press. And there you see the charge called against him, but he's a threat. And when they're able to break the press and he's got numbers, he is dangerous with the basketball. And there he is able to finish around the rim. I think he tripped there going, trying to go underneath, but still able to finish. Here's Haywood off of his interception. Looked like Earl Thomas on the back end jumping in front of the pass and took it the other way for the lay-in. And so a nine-point game, three and a half minutes to go when we come back from the media timeout. It goes the right foot, it goes this foot, it goes the left foot, it goes the left foot. You're going to kick, kick, right, left, up, up, bring it down. Oh, number three, number three, number three, let's go. We're going to run to the right, run to the left, back to my right, back to my right, right foot. And slide, left foot, this slide. We're going right, left, right. Oh, Kev, oh. Let's go get the hands, right foot, right to the left, back to my right, back to my left. And slide, we going left foot, then slide, we going uh, can flow. Right me to my left, back right to my left. Slide over to the DJ booth. My bad. Wade this time able to break the press from the Hornets. This, and we've got a charge called another one on Jonathan Wade. And Kobe Gantz going to check in for Gasovich. And so you can tell this is an offense for defense kind of thing. Coach Walker trying to get his guards and shooters checked in as frequently as possible. Over to Waller. Waller the corner three, just off the mark. And Dan Robinson, the seven-footer. And a tie-up, great effort from Dan 
from Devin Morgan, able to tie up Dan Robinson and get the ball back for his club. Nine point lead, 65 to 56. Dan Robinson, number 44, seven footer. He's in for his rebounding. So the Hornets not gonna get too many second chance opportunities. Uh, they've gotta convert on their first ones with the seven footer down there. But again, the lead is nine. Gant, swing to Waller. Morgan fakes the pull up, driving, going at the bucket and he's fouled. Morgan looks to me in a little bit of pain. See Morgan, the pump fake there, attacking the rim and draws the foul there on Dan Robinson. So Morgan at the line, he'll take two free throws. And the Hornets are in the double bonus now for the rest of the game. So every time they're fouled, they're going to get two free throws. And you see again here Gasovich checking in. And Dan Robinson, the seven-footer, being in kind of forces that from Coach Walker. Otherwise, uh, Norfolk State would have a mismatch every time down the floor. But just as I say that, Robinson will check out. And Coach Jones going offense for defense. He brings in number 22, Alex Long, for Norfolk State. Morgan hits the second, so the lead to seven. Haven't been much closer than this, though, in the second half. Under three minutes to go. They're going to need to get closer and get closer soon. And they kind of take the pressure off of the press, knowing that Norfolk State has had success against it. Our Tim tries to reach around block. Okoro no good, way short on the jumper, and here comes Haywood the other way. Going at Butler, kicks it out to our Tim. Our Tim drives, goes up with one hand, in and out. Good effort though from Gasovich, and we've got a foul called against Haywood. Gasovich's effort to tip that one, Haywood went and got it and draws the foul. And this has been a physical one. You see our Tim going at it, tries to get the runner, nearly had it to go down, but there's Gasovich's effort with the right hand to tip it away, and Haywood there to corral and go back up. And now a chance to cut it to five. Still with two and a half minutes to go. Haywood gets it to go. There's plenty of time left for the Hornets. And if I were Coach Walker, I don't even know that I'd go to the press off of this free throw. Well, folks, State's had success. But they're going to go in it. Morgan on Wade. Robinson the inbound. Gets it to taller Wade. Now back to Robinson. And Robertson, Robinson just dribbling around the press. Now dumps it out to Okoro. Robinson trying to slow things down for the Spartans. 15 to go on the shot clock. And now a big possession here for the Hornets defense. Robinson corrals it, and they're going to call double dribble. Robinson called for the travel. The Hornets defense comes through. 2.08 remaining. And Kobe Gantz checks back in for Ga Gasovich. 65 to 60, the Hornets creeping their way back into this ball game. 2.08 to go. Hornets continuing to show poise, not backing down one bit. Morgan pulls up from three, shot blocked from Butler. And Morgan maybe trying a little bit of hero ball there. Had Butler all over him. Tried to pull up over top. And great effort there from Jordan Butler with the block. Minute and 45 to go. Another important possession for this Hornets defense. Long's got it. Our Tim tips it away. Our Tim the other way. And a blocking foul called. But our Tim going to go to the free throw line. How about our Tim coming up late in the ball game? A minute and a half to go, and he, he draws the foul. 
And getting the cheer from the crowd, they get behind our Tim knowing what happened to him in the last game. But it has not affected him in this one. He's come through in every opportunity he's had. And might have been a little bit unlucky to get the foul there. He had DeAndre Haywood trailing and open with the layup. And our Tim can't get it to go. Gasovich checks back in for Gantz. And you see the Hornets giving our Tim some encouragement. They know they need him. He's important on the defensive end, but they need him to knock down these free throws. This is a big one. Gets it to go. Gets it to go. Four point game, a minute and a half to go. The press is there, it's overthrown, and it's out of bounds. Hornet basketball. And the crowd getting into it here. 65-61. Hornets with the ball. But here's the thing, a minute 28 to go. There's no need to rush. There's plenty of time. You don't need a three. You don't need to do too much. Get a good look, make it. Make it a one possession game, and you're going to put all the pressure on this Spartans team. Hornets in another nail biter. Our Tim from downtown gets it to go. Our Tim to Lion. How about this young man from Russia? The poise, as my, my colleague Byron Dixon would say, the unmitigated call to take the shot. He knocks it down, and we've got a one-point game. Our Tim from downtown makes it a one-point game. And this crowd jumping on his back. We've got the swag surf going here behind me. The Hornets are alive. It's as close as it's been since early, since it was tied 53 seconds into the game. This is the closest it has been. The Hornets are alive. Coach Jones gets a timeout. And you see the swag sir bouncing here in Memorial Hall on MLK Day. The Delaware State University Hornets are not going away. Oh yeah, let's go. Oh yeah, Norfolk. I want the ladies first. If he dropped the ladies first, I need all my ladies. Right here in front of me, and you can see a discouraged look on his face. Uh, but he looks ready. Jordan Butler's not a young man that shies away from clutch moments. He was big in last year's game against the Hornets. And we've got a one-point game now. 65-64. Coach Walker gets his guys out of the timeout. You've got Morgan, Gasovich, R. Tim, Waller, and Haywood versus Butler, Williams, Wade, Long, and Robinson. Spartans break the press. Just over a minute to go. The chain of defense going off here at Memorial Hall. One point game, 15 to go on the shot clock. Robinson's got it up top, dribbles into a press. Gets out of it though, Haywood on him. Wade pulls up from downtown. Gets the shooter's roll. And how about that, some road cooking for the Spartans. Jonathan Wade, a clutch three point shot to get the lead back to four. Good defensive possession there for the Hornets. Just an unfortunate break. Give Wade credit. He had the audacity to take the shot and got the shooter's roll. But again, if you're the Hornets, there's still no need for a three. You don't need to take it. If it's there, you go for it. But they don't need it right now. Four-point game. They're there. 55 seconds to go.
you to keep your hands. Spartans come out at a full court man-to-man -man press. 55 seconds to go. They're going to try and force the Hornets into a mistake. Four-point game. Four-point game. Crowd getting into it. Gantz brings it up. Or Tim's got it. Picks up his dribble. Got to get rid of it now. Finds Haywood, Haywood at the rim. And we've got shooting foul on the shot. And once again, the Hornets with an opportunity to get an N1 and just can't get it to fall. But Haywood's gonna go to the line with 43 seconds to go. You see Haywood going at the rim and not sure if the foul was on uh, number four, Micah Goss or Jordan Butler. Looked like Butler was there and in position, so it might have been on Goss. And Haywood's free throw goes in and out. And these rims have certainly been a lot kinder to Norfolk State than they have been to Delaware State. Here in Memorial Hall, Haywood's second free throw goes. 68-65. Robinson up the floor, and we're going to get a foul called on Devin Morgan. And that will send Robinson to the line for one and one. Morgan not happy with himself. 37 seconds to go. The lead is three. One and one. So this first free throw is huge. 68-65. Crowd doing everything they can to try and distract Robinson, and he gets it to go. Give credit to this Norfolk State team. They have not been phased at all by the moment. And 13, Stavian Allen will check in. But the Hornets have to go quick now, down five. Gantz going right at Wade, goes by him, and a foul called on. Thought it was on Jonathan Wade. It was. Just Wade's third, so he's not really in any trouble of fouling out, at least not in these last 32 seconds. But Kobe Gantz, the freshman, was very good in the free, at, from the free throw line against Hampton. They need him to knock these two down, and he can't get it to go. The free throw line continues to be the bugaboo for this Hornets team. Late in games, they have not been able to knock down their free throws. Hampton did, Norfolk State has, and it's got them down in this game. Just not giving themselves opportunities to stay in the game. They get to the line, but can't get it to go. Gantz gets the second to go, but you got to start converting two. Can't just get one. 
Devin Morgan, good defense on the inbounds pass, knocks it away. Thirty-one seconds to go. Bad pass there from Wade. Morgan's fouled. Foul by Zanai Robinson. A poor pass, poor decision from Wade trying to go to Robinson. And Morgan had position and Robinson fouled. And they're going to call both coaches over. Not sure. Not sure what they're uh, what they're discussing here. But a big turnover force there by the Hornets. They're going to have an opportunity to make it one possession. And you've got to got to consider the missed foul shots they've had in this game. And so the Hornets didn't have the ball, so it's not going to send Morgan to the free throw line. Morgan gets it into Artem. Artem goes back to Morgan. Morgan going right at Robinson. Can't get it to go. Artem creates a, knocks it away, and we've got a foul called on Number four, Micah Goss, and I believe that was Haywood that he fouled. And Goss has four now, so he's in trouble. He's in danger of fouling out of this one. 21.8 seconds to go. Haywood's at the line for two. Hornets have struggled from the free throw line here late in the second half. Haywood needs these two. It's the first one. But with 21 seconds to go, uh, they're going to need to put some pressure on, try and force a quick turnover, and if not, send Norfolk State to the line. Haywood gets them both. The lead is two. And a timeout from Coach Walker. He's going to try and set up his defense here. And exactly that's going to be the plan. Try and get a quick turnover. If you don't get it, foul. Send them to the line. Make them make free throws. We know exactly what, what um, pressure can do to free throw attempts. And they're going to try and put that pressure on Norfolk State if they can't force a turnover. 70 to 68, 21.8 seconds to go. The Hornets have battled back. They've been behind as much as 14 here in this second half. Couldn't get over the hump, couldn't get over the hump. Got it to one. Norfolk State answered with a three of their own by Jonathan Wade. And we've been back and forth since then. It's been as big as five and as low as two since the Hornets got it to one. Or excuse me, since Norfolk State got it back to four. But Norfolk State will inbound. We'll see what Coach Jones has drawn up. Is he going to try and get aggressive and get a home run? Or is he just looking to get it inbounds and try and send Jonathan Wade to the free throw line? Ryan going inbound to Zanai Robinson, and he gets it, and a foul called on Kavon Waller. So they'll send Robinson back to the free throw line. And he's been clutch. He's had a big game for the Spartans, but still a one and one. So this is a big first free throw, and a good job there by the Hornets. Didn't get the turnover, only lose eight tenths of a second. Robertson's free throw is good. He continues to stare the pressure right in the eyes and knock down the free throws. Robinson gets them both to go. And the Hornets, once again, though, they still don't need a three here. You can go for two. Gantz crosses Wade over, goes to the bucket and lays it in. How about the freshman Kobe Gantz and a quick inbound and foul by Devin Morgan on Zanai Robinson. And you see here Wade backpedaling Gantz just crossed over, 
got to the bucket, avoids the contact, and lays it in. Kobe Gantz, the young freshman, not backing down from the moment. But Robinson back at the line. Still a one and one. And the guy just will not back down. If I'm the Hornets, if you get another opportunity, I can't let Zanai Robinson go to the line again. Anybody but him. He's been absolutely cash money at the line. Hits them both. Still a four-point game, 17 seconds to go. No timeouts remaining for Delaware State. Spartans in a press, pass to Haywood. Haywood goes inside, picks it to Gantz and turns it over. Hornets trying to do too much there on that possession. Haywood probably should have gone up with the layup. And unfortunately for the Hornets, Norfolk State will be in the double bonus now. And so another team uh, just would not back down from the Hornets charge. They would not miss free throws. They would not fold. And Jordan Butler at the free throw line and another one made. And you have to give every bit of credit to Norfolk State. They have not let the Hornets get the possession with a lot with or get the ball within a possession. They've made their free throws, kept the Hornets at bay. And our Tim going the other way off the mark and that will do it. Norfolk State comes into Memorial Hall on MLK Day and gets a 75 to 70 victory over the Delaware State University Hornets. Delaware State drops to two and two in the conference. Norfolk State rises up to two and two in the conference now. And uh, another close loss for the Hornets. They continue to get themselves in these close games. Won a couple of them early in the season. Have failed to come up on the right end here at Memorial Hall. So again, both teams move to two and two. They will tie right in the middle of the MEAC with Savannah State and Florida A&M. Uh, so the Hornets fall here at home in their second back-to-back uh, -back home games, and they'll head on the road now. The 21st, they'll be at South Carolina State, and then the 23rd, they'll be at Savannah State. We'll be back on January the 28th as the Hornets, the men and the women, take on the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Once again, your final score is 76-70. to Norfolk State wins from all of us here at WDSU-TV. I'm Chris Moore. We'll see you next time.